Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving into another chilling case that will leave you stunned. We're talking about the case of Nobuyuki Sato, a schoolgirl who was kept as a pet in her own house. Now, when we think of maniacs, we often imagine brutal killings and unspeakable horrors. But sometimes, the true extent of their depravity goes beyond even that. Some maniacs choose to keep their victims alive, subjecting them to years of abuse and torture. Enter Fusako Sano, our protagonist in this twisted tale. For nearly a decade, she was held captive in a room with an unlocked door. It's a baffling story that raises countless questions about how such a thing could happen. What makes this case even more chilling is that Fusako's captivity went unnoticed for so long, despite being right under the noses of those around her. It's a stark reminder of how easily evil can hide in plain sight. So, join me as we unravel the harrowing details of the Nagata Girl Captivity Incident, and try to make sense of the incomprehensible. Victim. Victim. Fusako Sano, a girl named Fusako Sano, later changed her name to Sachiko Yamada, was born in the small Japanese town of Mitsuke, located in Niigata Prefecture in 1980, on November 28th. She grew up in an ordinary family of average income, was a welcome and favorite child. The girl attended one of the local schools, was fond of baseball, and cheered for the local team. On November 13th, 1990, two weeks before her 10th birthday, Fusako, who was in the fourth grade at the time, was coming home from school. She was a little late because she had stayed to watch the school baseball game. Her parents were aware of the sporting event, so they were not particularly concerned when the schoolgirl walked home on her usual route. It was already getting dark on a cold autumn evening. There were almost no passers-by on the street, and rare cars were passing quickly, disappearing from sight. Suddenly, one car overtook the girl and then braked sharply and swerved in front of her. The loud squeal of brakes divided young Sano's life into before and after. Kidnapper Nobuyuki Sato was born in 1962, July 15th, in the Japanese prefecture of Niigata, in a wealthy family. The head of the family had its own successful business, related to passenger transportation. The boy was a late child of his parents, and at the time of his birth his father was 62 years old, and his mother was 37 years old. Nobuyuki had five siblings from his father's previous marriage, but he had no ties to them. The boy grew up a capricious and very spoiled child for whom there were no inhibitions. At the same time, he was very emotional and sometimes even aggressive if his demands were not met immediately. He could throw a tantrum, and once he threw himself at his mother with fists right in the store when she did not buy him another toy. At school, Nobuyuki had almost no friends, because of his complex character, strange and sometimes inadequate behavior. It is worth noting that the boy was quite tall, which he was very embarrassed of, and all the time slouched a lot, so he received a lot of offensive nicknames. On one of the central streets of the city, the head of the family built a luxurious two-story house in European style, where on the second floor most of the part was occupied by a spacious and bright children's room for his favorite son. However, the boy did not like the room. He behaved restlessly and kept repeating that he was afraid to be there alone. Such anxious behavior and unreasonable fears became the reason to show the child to a doctor. After an initial medical examination at a regular hospital, the boy was referred to a psychiatrist for evaluation. There he was diagnosed with several disorders, including nyxtophobia, fear of the dark, mysophobia, fear of germs, and dirt. In addition, the boy was found to have a strange combination of autophobia, fear of loneliness, and sociophobia, anxiety disorder related to social interaction. That is, he was equally afraid of and avoided both loneliness and contact with others. Nobuyuki always remained a loner. He had neither a girlfriend, despite his rather attractive appearance, nor friends. In high school, he actually became an outcast, and peers simply did not want to communicate with him. Kidnap and Arrest as Sato became increasingly unsociable and sullen, he spent most of his time in his room watching TV. Over time, he stopped letting his parents into his room, or even onto the second floor of the house. If this boundary was violated, he would physically attack them, shouting and threatening them with death. In the spring of 1989, Sato began to go for walks, preferring to stroll near a local school where he closely watched the girls. One day, he grabbed a girl right at the school gate, but she was rescued by bystanders before the police arrived. 
Sato faced serious charges, but was given only a year's probation at his trial in August of the same year, possibly due to his father's influence and connections. His name mysteriously disappeared from the criminal database, further indicating his father's efforts to protect him. However, Sato felt shame and pain for the monster he had become. The Kidnapping A year and a half after the failed attempt, Sato went on the hunt again. On November 13, 1990, he kidnapped nine-year-old Fusako Sano, who had been delayed after a sporting event. Threatening her with a knife, he abducted her and took her to his house, where he tied her up and kept her in his room. Despite living near the school and previously attempting a kidnapping, Sato was not initially considered a suspect due to his father's intervention. Fusako's parents and the police launched a massive search, but no clues were found. Fusako remained captive, terrified, and obeying Sato's every command, hoping for mercy. The Captivity Sato subjected Fusako to psychological and physical abuse, tying her up tightly and punishing her for disobedience. He treated her as a living toy or pet, feeding her meager meals prepared by his mother. Despite forbidding her to leave the bed, he gradually loosened his restrictions, allowing her to watch TV and occasionally turning on the radio. Fusako, psychologically broken, resigned herself to her fate, never attempting to escape or alert others. For almost ten years, she remained in captivity, unseen by anyone but her captor, until her eventual rescue. Mother, abuse, and police indifference. No Boyuki's mother lived on the first floor of the house, and for years had not entered her son's room because he threatened to beat her if she broke the ban. The woman knew her spoiled and violent son all too well, so she followed his rules. After Nobuyuki put a prisoner in the room, he forbade the mother to even go up to the second floor, and when she once tried to do so, he simply pushed the elderly mother down the stairs. She worked as much as she could and tried to stay home as little as possible, but when she retired in 1996 at the age of 73, her life became simply unbearable. Her son regularly abused his mother, beat her, and forced her to follow a series of rules he had invented. Finally, the elderly woman could not stand it, and in the spring of 1996, she went to the police where she wrote a statement that she was a victim of domestic violence by her own son. But the police apparently did not want to deal with the case, and therefore persuaded Mrs. Sato to withdraw her statement and independently deal with the family problems. The pensioner also twice applied for consultation to the public health center, where she complained about her son's inadequate and aggressive behavior and asked to hospitalize him in a psychiatric hospital. But even here she was refused, considering such a reason not serious enough, and advising her to persuade her son to go to the clinic for help himself. Almost four years later, in January 2000, the exhausted elderly woman, after another beating, called the hospital and asked for a medical team to be sent to her house, as well as representatives of law enforcement, because her son was holding her tied up and had tasered her several times. An unexpected discovery. This time, the officials finally responded to the pensioner's complaints and went to the address. When the ambulance and police car arrived at the house, Nobuyuki became visibly nervous. He began to behave aggressively, resisted, and tried to fight. Because of this inappropriate behavior, he had to be handcuffed and the medics injected him with a large dose of sedatives. The beaten elderly woman admitted that she was afraid of her son, whose behavior was becoming more and more aggressive and uncontrollable. She also said that she had not gone up to the second floor of the house for many years because her son forbade her to do so, threatening to kill her. The police officers decided to check the second floor in Nobuyuki's room. As soon as they entered, they noticed a pile of blankets lying on the bed, which suddenly moved slightly. Pulling back the blankets, the police officers were dumbfounded to see a very thin, pale, and exhausted girl underneath them. When they asked her who she was and how she came to be here, she very quietly gave her name and said that she had been kidnapped on her way home from school a long time ago. Confessions of a Maniac After the gruesome discovery, Nayuki's mother was brought into the room and asked her if she knew the girl, but the woman was very surprised and claimed that she had no idea that anyone, other than her and her son, lived in their house. The captive also confirmed that she had never seen the woman before. The same day, Nuki was brought to the station for questioning, and what he told literally shocked the police officers. He remembered in detail the day he was driving along the road and saw Fusako. According to the detainee, he thought the girl was very cute and wanted to take her home with him. Sato claimed that he took care of her. He fed her, washed her, dressed her, 
and read her comic books, and punished her only for disobedience. He also admitted that he loved his captive as a friend, and she seemed to love him too. He had no intention of ever letting her go and hoped she would stay with him for life. He loved spending time with her. He could talk to the girl for hours about snacks, soccer, music, or his favorite comic book characters, and she would listen silently. He added that he never locked his bedroom door, but Fusako never tried to escape, which he concluded meant she liked living with him. Trial and sentence. After a medical examination, the doctors concluded that despite his mental disorder, Sato was able to recognize his actions and could therefore stand trial. His mother could be involved as an accomplice because the elderly woman, at the request of her son, regularly bought feminine hygiene products in the supermarket and could suspect something wrong. But it was taken into account the fact that she repeatedly contacted the police and medical institutions. But her requests to visit the family home were ignored. The case was widely publicized even before the trial began, and the city police were strongly criticized because Nobuyuki had been previously prosecuted for attempted kidnapping of a schoolgirl. But when he brought his plan to the end, he remained above suspicion. As a result, the local police chief and the head of the regional police department, who failed to control the situation from the beginning and made a lot of mistakes, were removed from their posts. Nobuyuki Sado was brought to trial in May 2000. All his actions and even the smallest offenses were studied in detail and attached to the case because the prosecutors tried to achieve for the kidnapper the maximum possible punishment. As a result, Sato was found guilty and sentenced to 14 years in prison. Such a term was considered the maximum. He was released in the spring of 2015. By that time, his mother had long died in a home for the elderly, and Nobuyuki had no other relatives. He himself was found dead a year and a half later, in early 2017, in a small rented room. The cause of his death was not disclosed. Kairi, how did the girl's life turn out? At the time of her discovery, Fusaka was so weak that she could barely stand on her feet. Doctors diagnosed her with exhaustion and dehydration, and her muscles were practically atrophied. In addition to stuttering, frightened of sunlight, and practically lost her communication skills. When her parents saw their daughter for the first time after nearly a decade apart, they didn't even recognize her. It took the girl about a year to more or less recover physically, but her mental health took much longer to recover. Fusako Sano had severe post-traumatic stress disorder, shunned people, and her intelligence remained at the level of a 9- or 10-year-old child. Her parents took their daughter out of town. She changed her name to Sachiko Yamada and flatly refused to talk to the press. Over time, she made friends took up photography, and even passed her driver's license test. Unfortunately, in 2007, she suffered another shock when her father drowned in front of her eyes during a family trip to a pond. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click on the bell. Not to miss news stories from around the world. See you soon. Take care.